Good afternoon, everybody. And uh, thank you for hanging around to the very last session of the day. I really thought it would be me, the video guy, and two or three of you. So uh, this is kind of fun. I want to start with a quick video. If you've seen any iPad commercials recently, you may have noticed this website as the person scrolled and tweeted. Needless to say, it's become a pretty famous site, and it runs on Joomla, one of the most popular content management systems on the web today. And it's one of the CMSs we teach here at OS Training. A content management system is a web application that makes it easier for non-technical people to publish content to a website. And Joomla is one of the best. Joomla began in late 2005 as an offshoot of another content management system. And since 2006, it has been downloaded over 35 million times. In fact, by the time you've finished watching this video, Joomla will have been downloaded another 50 times. From businesses to education, from famous people to famous places, and from world governments to the United Nations, with 64 languages available and over 10,000 extensions, Joomla is everywhere. We teach Joomla. Whether it's in a classroom, on site with your company, or here online, we'll help you learn the skills you need to build or manage your Joomla website. As always, included with any online subscription, classroom training, or in-house training, we provide support for you as you learn, staffed by people who really know their stuff. So if it's Joomla you're after, look no further. We'll get you started down the path of all the Joomla goodness there is to have, here at OS Training. Well, I don't know about you, but I absolutely hate when I come to a seminar. Oh, thanks. I absolutely hate when I come to a seminar and it's nothing but a commercial. So I promise you that's the last thing you'll hear about OS Training until the very end, except for just the brief introduction that I'm going to give you. My name is Rod Martin. I was born in this country. I grew up in this city, and I do those. When I was telling everyone is in how city, and I carry one of those. About seven years ago, in the thriving metropolis of Dillsburg, Indiana. That goes along. Woo! Redneck in the dictionary? You get a picture. We have an armed militia 15 minutes from my house and for a good Canadian. And uncover me. But I do want you to know, you every one of these, I am legal. All right? <laughs> Just want you to know, we're even in the process of maybe what things going to look like and how it's going to look and how it's going to interact. But I'm a legal alien. There we go. All right. Uh, a lot of, uh, my wife is uh, here, actually, for the, one of the very first times ever. Uh, we've been married 25 years. And uh, yeah. My daughter, Rebecca, is 22, and she is an EMT this year in a town nearby. Uh, my 19-year-old son is... Uh, Finding himself. <laughs> yeah. He's in that middle, you know, he's just in that process of figuring out what he wants. He's not in university spending $20,000 of my money for nothing. So, now this was Christmas last year, so we thought we'd ask my daughter's boyfriend to join us. <laughs> okay. So, he's six foot nine. Yeah. Trying to call you, sir? Six foot, you're a, you're a midget. Yeah. <laughs> We went to a ball game this summer in Cincinnati, and I said, I had Philip because it was packed. I said, you go out ahead, we'll just follow along behind like little ducklings. We walked, you know, and the, wall, and the sea of people parted. It was great. Uh, this is my daughter fighting fires. Uh, this is my son this past summer. He, spend, uh, he spent the last four summers in Texas lifeguarding in 110 degree uh, heat. I love these guys, and in case you don't know what sport that is, it's this one. Uh, I love the cowboys. Not much to love this one. Yeah. I'm the guy that takes pictures of all of his food. Anybody else like that? <laughs> everywhere I go, everywhere I go, if I'm eating something strange, I love to take pictures. That, I put that on Facebook and somebody said, that, that's the weirdest looking cheesecake I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. um, I was in Denver last year for DrupalCon and uh, this is veal tongue. Uh, oh, oh, good stuff. I put that on Facebook and a friend of mine said, I make it a habit to never eat anything that still has something in its mouth. <laughs> 
kind of out in the, like I said, out in the absolute boonies. So we've got roosters. Uh, I was reading Harvard Business Review to my cat the other day, and she fell asleep. <laughs> um, we, I have done about 250 of the 700 to 1,000 online lessons we have at Open Source Training. Um, starting with Joomla 1.5, uh, Steve approached me a number of years ago, a couple of years ago now, and said, hey, listen, uh, you know, would you, would you be interested in making videos? And I said, yes, like most of you, I've never done it before either. Um, and so I said, sure, I can do that and went home and learned how to do it and uh, made all the Joomla beginner videos, the, the uh, intermediate videos, the template videos, yada, yada, yada. So of about, out of the about 700 lessons, I know we've got about 1,000 videos online. I'm not sure how many lessons we have, but I've done about 250 of them. Um, I owned and still own a company called Navigate Tomorrow. Uh, it's a small design firm up in the Cincinnati area. We did and have done about, uh, well, I don't know how many sites I've made in Joomla, but about 100, just over 100 client sites in Joomla, 1, 1 1.5, and, and, and 2.5 lately. But my main job now being open source training, where I am the director of uh, online video. And I uh, love working with Steve and Nick, and uh, if you've never checked us out, please do so. End of commercial. Uh, and that's what we're here to talk about today is uh, Joomla. So um, that's me. I'm Rod Martin, and I'm really excited that you decided to stay today and uh, hang out with me for a little while. Um, the video you saw a few minutes ago was what I would consider a promotional video. That's not what I'm talking about today. That took me hours to do. I'm talking about video that's going to take you minutes to do. Because you don't want to spend hours doing videos for your clients. Uh, it's it's non-billable time most of the time. But it's something we have to do. So here's where we're going today. I'm just going to give you a brief introduction. I'm going to talk about the why, the how, the when, and then hopefully we'll have some time for discussion. Um, and it depend we already had a bit of a discussion beforehand already. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> I did create the Joomla versions video that's up on uh, YouTube that's connected from the Joomla site, um, and you can take a look at that later. Well, why do we want to make videos for our clients? How many of you in here are uh, who do sites for people and then hand them off? I would imagine, OK, most of you, since that was the session's about. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I'm not, I hate documentation. So I, in fact, I, I hate it so much I usually don't even bother doing it. Um, and I just send them off to figure it out for themselves. No, I'm, I'm kidding. But in, we all have this. So the why of today is this. Uh, there's really only one reason. We suck at this. I mean, we do. You and I are not good at documenting our work. Uh, how many of you would consider you're pretty good at documentation? One, okay, so a handful, that's good. That's why the rest of you are here. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna hopefully share with you a bit of a workflow and some techniques that will help you as you build sites and as you work with your clients to create some training videos going along. I'm not going to tell you to wait till the end and make the beautiful masterpieces or whatever you think um, our videos are because they just they take hours, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. I want to help you see there's a workflow that you can use that will help you do this as you go, and it will make you a, an, we shouldn't use this word, a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I don't swear, and I don't have zombie videos. Sorry. OK. Um, but <laughs> but, but uh, you'll be, you'll, your clients will love you for this. All right, so that's the why. Wouldn't it be better if the documentation just landed in the client's lap when we delivered the site. Something like that. So when you say, here's the site, you go, here's everything you need to know to run the site. And oh, by the way, we don't have to spend a whole lot more time together because I've, I've got everything prepared for you. So that's where we're going today. So I'm going to talk about, I'm going to give you eight tips on uh, video creation for your clients. Uh, and let's start right away. Number one, here's what you need. You have to have a, duh, a computer and a microphone. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm a Mac guy, as you can tell. Uh, all of my images and the computer I have up here is Mac. But it's irrelevant what kind of computer you use, as long as you have software that will work on your computer. Uh, pretty much every laptop today and every desktop comes with a webcam. That's all you need. Uh, in fact, I don't even use my webcam. Uh, I think, I don't, yeah, really, who wants to look at this very long, right? <laughs> so, yeah, the lights go out. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> All you need is a half-decent computer, and you have to have a good microphone. Now, when I say good microphone, spend 50 bucks and get a headset. 
or one of the USB mics, but don't go out and spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars. If you get a USB microphone that has an arm, do yourself a favor and go to Radio Shack and get $2 wind socks. They will prevent every p p pop and all of that other stuff, and they'll even block some of the ambient sound that might come across. My office is right next to our road. It's about, what, 12 feet, 15 feet from the road, and every time I'm doing a video, somebody decides to drive, back doing, drive by doing about 80 miles an hour in a 35. We live in the country, so why not? You don't need to spend hundreds on a microphone, but you do need to have a half-decent one. All right. So whether you get the $100 USB standing microphone or a $50, $60 Logitech headset, really the $19, $20 ones, eh, you can get by with it. Honestly, they're just fine. We're not talking professional video here. We're talking you've got to have good audio. There is nothing worse, and I know you know this, there's nothing worse than watching a video that has crappy audio. It ruins it. In fact, most people just won't. Uh, when I watch um, some of these demo videos for product online, and I know they've just talked into the microphone on their laptop, I want, to, well, I, I did, I pulled all my hair out. <laughs> because I know it could be so much better if they spent 20 or 30 bucks. So if you're going to do this, do yourself a favor. Do not just use the microphone in your laptop or on your iPhone. Now, in a pinch, it's okay. But if you want to give your clients the best experience, the audio's got to be as good as the video. All right? So that's point number one. A um, couple of software items here. ScreenFlow for the Mac. I don't think there's anything better. It just came out with version 4, and it rocks. Uh, it's got built-in alpha key for blue screen and green screen. You can uh, gr uh, group your tracks now. Uh, when I do the videos for OS training, I might have 20 tracks going. Well, not anymore. I can group those together, and it, and it just manages them for me. I can lock them down when I'm done, and it really, it really is sweet. And there's about 40 new features in ScreenFlow 4 if you've ever used it. On the PC side, you've got Camtasia. Um, Camtasia is available for the Mac, but it's not very good. I don't think it'll ever be as good as ScreenFlow. If you're a PC user, uh, Camtasia, unfortunately, is about 300 bucks. There's really, you're going to have to pay for it. There's nothing that comes close. Like, remember Jing? You can make videos on the web We're using Jing. Well, that's great, but you can't edit them. Uh, and there's lots of tools like that out there. In fact, there's cheaper tools for the PC, I know. Um, but if you're going to make a commitment to this, really, honestly, $300, you're going to make that back in a couple of clients, if not one client, by the time you build in the cost for the, for the training. So that would be my suggestion there. Um, number two in the house, you've got to be ready. You've got to mind your P's and your Q's. By the way, there was a link on the opening screen. That's the Dropbox for all of the PDF for this, and it's on the last screen as well. So don't feel like you have to kill yourself to get the, the, the notes and stuff. So the first P is prepare. Um, you've got to know your audience, i.e., or your client. Since we're talking about developing client videos here, I'm going to keep using the client analogy. You've got to know your client. You've got to know how tech savvy they are. I just spent a week with a group down in uh, Safford, Arizona. They are about as tech savvy as my 79-year-old mom, who has never touched a computer. And so we went through and gave some very detailed instruction for two days, and then I made videos for them at the end of the second day, sitting there with them as they asked me questions. Worked really, really well. Uh, but if your client is a little bit more tech savvy, you don't have to maybe go into as much detail. Know your own style. Uh, I'm speaking very quickly here. I don't ever speak that quickly on a video for obvious reasons. But you know who you are, know your own style, um, and, and let your own style come through. You don't have to be a trainer to do this. I, I, I hope I'm not remembered as the video guy. I, I probably will from this conference, but I hope I'm remembered as a great trainer at some point. My, honey, can you put that on my tombstone? Rod was a great trainer. Oh, and I loved him too. Um, <laughs> And, uh, well, <laughs> I'm worth more dead than alive. <laughs> Number three, know your site. So you built it, right? It's really hard to do voiceover for somebody else. Uh, I usually won't do that um, because I don't know their site, their product, or whatever. Know specifically what areas you need to provide tutorials for. And this is, the, this is probably the key point here. Don't do the tutorial on how to add an article to their site if it's just using the normal Joomla article manager because there's tons of videos available for that. Okay, last commercial until the very end. Um, OS Training has a great tool called the OS Toolbar. 
you install it in the back end like a component, and it's all contextual videos. All of our course videos pop up in their back end when they click on the icon. So if you're in an article manager, I can't remember how to do an article, click on the thing and one of our videos will pop up. It's pretty cool. Um, and if you want to know how much, Nick is in the back and he'll tell you all about it. And Steve is there too. But don't, don't, don't provide tutorials for absolutely everything that Joomla does out of the box. There's lots of other options for this, right? You want to provide a tutorial for the thing that you've created that's special for them that may not be available somewhere else. So if you've done some really neat K2 stuff, Zoo, whatever, you're using a component that's not readily, uh, there's no trading out there for it, spend some time and make a tutorial. Oh, number five, please answer their questions, not yours, not what you think is important. But get a list of, uh, again, when I was in Safford this week, we spent two days together. And with, the, with two hours to go, I said, all right, now I've covered everything we need to cover. What are your questions? What's your big five, seven, ten burning questions? So she had kept notes because I told her to. And so at the end, for two hours, I went through every step of the site that she'd had questions on. And the videos are done because they are brain dead simple to do. And I'm going to show you that in just a minute. So be prepared. Number two. This is the P and the Q. You've got to have a quiet environment. Uh, again, that audio is just as important as the video. And so if your dog is barking, I have two dogs, one that stands about this tall when I, I was going to, should have shown you that pit. He's huge and he has that deep bark, right? So when I'm, when I'm recording, sure enough, that's when the chickens will walk by the back door and the dogs go nuts. Um, but you need a quiet environment. And so the final P, Q, and S, um, this is debatable. Should you write a script? Um, in the beginning, maybe. The more competent, the more you do this, the less you'll need a script. And the better you know your own work, the less you'll need a script. Um, I usually write out, again, depending on the work I'm doing, I'll write out some key points, bullet points, and then I'll just talk as I d do the thing on the screen. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this later. It depends on the level of the video you're doing. Again, we're talking about tutorials for my clients. I'm not gonna, probably not going to use a script. I'm going to have some bullet points, and I'm going to know where I'm going on the website in order to make sure I cover all the, the bases. Uh, the, um, the Joomla versions video we, had, we made for the Joomla 3 um, launch took 12 hours, maybe 15 hours, and it's a two-minute video. Most of that was in script and style and figuring out the flow. The recording of it really didn't take that long at all. Uh, and then a little bit of post-production. Uh, that video I showed at the very beginning, that took maybe seven hours, maybe eight hours. Again, most of that was scripting, right? Um, so if you're, if you're to doing a tutorial on a product or the various, the less scripting you'll need, but at least bullet points of what you're going to go over, OK? When, all right, recording. Uh, this is a skill out of screen flow, uh, and Camtasia doesn't look much different. So let me give you some thoughts on this. In resolution, when you're using screen flow, and basically all screen flow is, is is a piece of software that records everything on your desktop. Same thing with Camtasia. You start it, and it starts recording every screen, everything that happens on your screen. It's exactly what we're doing here today, and you'll see it in the videos that from every session at the conference. Um, and screen flow is great. Uh, you can, um, you can, well, I'll show you what you can do with it later. But here's the deal. A uh, high quality computer, go full screen. I have a 27 inch iMac. I, I record it full screen. Uh, and then I shrink it down later. I might change the resolution of that screen to something that's a little less so it looks really clunky when I'm recording. But when I shrink it down later on, uh, it actually looks really good. And again, that's something you'll play with. Low, lower quality computers, again, change your screen resolution to 1280 or 1024. Generally speaking, you're not going to show your videos at much more than 1024 or 1280, so why go bigger anyway? Um, and so that's a thought, screen resolution. And you'll need to play with that to get your particular setup right. Depends on the computer, depends on the monitor, et cetera. Um, recording mobile, we actually kind of talked a little bit about this a few minutes ago. Uh, you can actually now, with some really easy to use uh, software, record your mobile apps as well. Uh, you'll notice on that opening video I showed, it was an actual recording of my iPad. So uh, we'll see if it works. <laughs> it did earlier than it didn't. Who knows? Uh, it's a little app called uh, AirServer. It's $15, works on the Mac and the PC. 
So your PC users are not left out here. But it is for iOS devices only, not Androids. So that's one thing um, about this. So let's see if it'll work. Quick demo time. And so I am changing the, oh yeah, there we go. So I'm changing the, uh, I just swiped over, double click on the home page, swiped over, changed the, Air stre the streamer or the AirPlay to my MacBook Air. And now I can stream and record anything that's on my screen I can record, right? So now I can play with my iPad and it will be recorded for me. And again, I'm wearing my headset so the voiceover is working as well. So if you've got a mobile device, a mobile app or a mobile web, uh, it works just really well. And it also works in portrait mode. It'll flip around to portrait mode on your iPhones as well. So it's, it's really uh, ex pretty cool for 15 bucks. You can't really beat that. So we're up to $114 plus your computer. Okay, oh, uh, and the microphone. So we're up to 160, 170 bucks. Okay, so that's not bad. All right, so let's uh, let me turn that off so I don't mess up the system. You put a camera on yourself. Your Going to talk. Uh, to, I'll get to that one. Um, so let's go back to that. So very easy to record mobile now. This and again for the first time, there was an app that was released for it. Uh, any Android users in the room? Is there an app to record your screen in the Android world? Nobody knows. Okay, so use this, or um, in a, th there probably is. Um, so I would investigate it if that mobile element is important for your uh, for your particular video training that you're doing. Uh, please, please, please use your natural voice. Now, if you're by n if you're by nature really boring, <laughs> don't use your natural voice. Try and jazz it up a bit. Okay. But, but really, uh, I don't know about you, but, and again, I'm not, I hate to be photographed, uh, and this is stressing me out to no end. But um, uh, I, I was doing a video for a, for a, a client uh, a couple of years ago, and this, the executive director is a very bubbly person, right? Really cool, nice lady. Not when you put the video camera on her. You know, she transforms into, well, thank you for coming today. <laughs> I'm going, what happened? So again, it's kind of weird the first few times you use it, but use your natural voice. Don't speak too quickly. If you've heard or watched any of the videos we do at OS Training, I'm speaking about two times faster now than I would ever speak on a video. Use your natural voice. You don't need to yell. You don't need to be quiet. But you do need to have some inflection uh, because, again, all they're watching is a screen, which gets really boring after a while. Uh, so your voice carries the day at times, okay? Um, keep going despite your mistakes. And I can't, this is a big one for me. Um, the editing section of the software is really simple to use. So if you make a big mistake, don't worry, pause and keep going. You might need to backtrack a couple of seconds to kind of pick up the thought, but you can edit that out in, in, a, in a second or two. Again, if I'm doing more of the more the presentation style videos, uh, we do a lot of editing. But when I'm doing training videos for a client, I hardly do any editing at all. But if I make a big mistake, I, do st I don't stop and stop the recording. I just keep going and edit it out later. Um, your question, recording your camera. All right, so this is, I did this in my office the other day. Yeah. Uh, I am as ugly as sin at about 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm not much better now. Uh, my point, my thought would be, nah, nah, nah. Your unless there's a real good reason to videotape your face, uh, because you're going to have a headset on, or you're going to be talking into a microphone, that might help sometimes. I find that people are more, they need to focus more on the screen than on me. I know DrupalEyes.me is a Drupal uh, company that does, obviously, Drupal videos. They record the person. Lynda.com, I think, has a good way of doing it. Uh, Lynda.com does a video intro of the person, and then you never see them again until the end of the course. Uh, that's how we do it at OS Training. Uh, I think that's the best way to do it. Honestly, they're not there to see you. They're there to learn the content. So We're recording you right now. I understand that. Yeah, I know. But, but this is a different application. Okay, We're at a conference, and I'm very animated. I'm standing up. I'm walking around and I'm talking to people. That's different than sitting in front of your screen going, okay, now move your mouse here. <laughs> Click there. Watch that drop down go. You know, 
Uh, they don't want to see my eyes or my face, I don't think. Uh, and so I, I think uh, maybe a, an intro with you in it, even for training for your clients. Hey, you know, got four videos for you today. Here you go. Watch, enjoy. You know, that's the, about the extent I would do. That's just personal opinion. I don't think there's a really a right answer there. Yes? Yeah, and absolutely, that's a really, the question from the back of the room was, uh, the intro and outro, you know, if I'm on camera, I'm branding myself, uh, I think, you know, that's not a bad idea. Uh, I'm kind of focusing in on training f videos for a specific client, they already know who I am. But again, I think that's important, because maybe, you know, six months from now when that guy got fired, and the new guy comes in, they, they may not know you. So that, that's a really good point, that's, uh, that's worth thinking about. Uh, number four, editing. Uh, and again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because uh, editing can take a huge amount of time. <coughs> Here's what we do at OS Training. We remove every um and every ah. Do you know how many times you say um in a day? Um, so, um, every, all together now? Um, all right. We say it a lot. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. So at OS Training, we, we, we take the time to remove every one of them because they need to flow, okay? Uh, number two, we remove... And you do that by overlaying um, yeah. dead air on that space, or you're actually clipping the video? Through? I clip the video. Okay. Uh, well, it depends on the scene. You jump cut, right? Uh, it, with, with screen flow, I can clip that, that sound, I can drop the sound down. Depends what's going on on the screen at the time. More often than not, I will... Um, so I cut the video. Don't do that. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll cut it out but it depends how big the mouse jump is or, or whatever. Sometimes if I need to do that, then I'll just do a, a, a voiceover instead. I tend to not do voiceovers, but once in a while, you know, you kind of have to. Again, ne right now I'm talking about what we would consider high end for, for the videos that people are gonna pay for, okay? Um, we remove all key mistakes. In fact, we remove all mistakes, unless the mistake is intentional to, as a teaching point. Uh, we use a lot of images. Uh, they're very useful, but we keep them to a minimum um, because sometimes they can be distracting. It depends on the style of video you're creating, right? Uh, when you're talking about access control, I'm not sure it's easy. I'm not sure you can teach access control in a video without a couple of big, nice images that show this is what access control does, right? And so sometimes those prepared images can really be helpful. Uh, I never put logos in videos at all. They just take up space. Intros, outros, maybe, but you know, and you can use them as overlays at the beginning or at the end. Uh, this one's key. The length of your video depends on the task that you're presenting, but honestly, you can't, people just can't sit there and watch a 60 minute training video when all they're watching is a screen. So what I did again last week in Safford, I'm just using that as an illustration because it's how I've done them all. I, I take questions, specific questions that she wants to know the answers to, and then we create three to 10 minute videos. And my preference is three to five minutes, but sometimes you just can't do it in five. If you can't do it in 10, then break down the topic into multiple sections, okay? Because people, people have an attention span of about, uh, according to John Medina from a book called Brain Rules, uh, 10 minutes is the max. And at 10 minutes, you need to do something different to stimulate people's minds to come back with you. Uh, PowerPoint is evil, as we all know. It's the, it's the bane of every public speaker's existence. And it's a shame we have to use it. But you'll notice that every, about every 10 minutes, I try to throw something in to lighten the mood, change the mood. And, and the Frank, last night's speaker did that very, very well. In fact, all the keynote speakers this week have been really good and have actually done that, whether they meant to or not. So what I'm saying, though, oh, sorry. Um, in your videos, when you're training, thank you, when you're doing training videos for your client, I don't think number one is necessary. Now, if you, if you did a long um, um, <laughs> I think probably you ought to edit that one out, okay? Or a yoga move. Or a yoga move. Oh, but leave the video But leave the, <laughs> <laughs> I do think you need to remove the key mistakes, but they, take, they don't take time because generally speaking, when I'm recording a video, I'll make a note that says at three minutes or whatever, I really messed up. So I can quickly pan over to that. Um, and then again, the length. Please make your mouse at least 
Uh, a mouse is, especially if you're not zooming in on a particular area, the 200%, 250% mouse, mouse really helps people see what's going on on the screen. Zooming, okay. This is everybody's favorite topic from grade 11, or 11, I'm from Canada, grade 11 you know, video class, right? Zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out till somebody throws up. It's really, <laughs> okay. Do zoom in on key points and key areas. And both Camtasia and ScreenFlow allow you to zoom really nicely into a particular area. So if you're talking about a drop-down box or if you're talking about a key function in, in one of the extensions that you're highlighting, zoom in on it by all means because here's what people do. They may, you may have the video showing at 900 by 600 pixels or 900 by 500 pixels. Most people are going to go full screen. And when they go full screen, I don't care who your provider is, there's going to be some fuzziness there. So if you've zoomed in, the fuzziness tends to be ignored and go away. But you don't zoom in and zoom out, constantly making everybody very dizzy. All right. Export size. Uh, really? I thought we went to 415. Um, it's about 4 now, so you can go a little bit more. Oh. OK. So, OK. No, this is the last one of the day. OK, I got it. All right. Sorry. Um, depending on how, where you're hosting and how you're presenting it, 905 is what we use. We export at 1280, uh, and Brightcove puts it out at 905, which is really good. That's a nice big size, so people don't have to expand it. But I would always export at 1280. You never know when you're going to put that on a DVD for someone, OK? And that's the minimum size for a DVD. So export at 1280, and then the hosting service will probably fix that for you. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, export at H.264. Uh, please don't do WMVs or FLVs. Well, we all know Flash is dead. Um, even QuickTime movies, they're not that good. H.264, and I'll talk about hosting in just a minute. Don't forget all these slides are available. Hosting, YouTube, bad. Vimeo, good. Uh, Amazon Web Services, nah. If you're gonna, I don't recommend you host videos yourself. And here's why, because host, hosting them yourself, or even on Amazon Web Service, you've gotta manage the export, the conversion, and, and a lot of the features about your video that you don't need to worry about. So here's my suggestion. Vimeo Pro is $199 a year. OK, so that's a bit of money. But you're going to make that money back in no time. So now we're up to, what, three, $350. You have um, an absolute unbelievable amount of space, bandwidth, and they're available on every device the second they're available anywhere. You can mark them private so they can't be found and you can embed them anywhere you want. What I do for clients is I set up administrator links and administrator articles, and I embed Vimeo videos into those, and then I set up a whole menu system for their particular training. So when they log in as the super administrator or the administrator or the super user, whatever it's called now, can't keep up, um, they have this menu somewhere that gives them links to all of their stuff, all of their tutorials, and it's streamed from uh, Vimeo Pro. The advantage of Pro over Standard, it, there are a number of them, but most of it's around uh, how many you can upload, uh, the bandwidth, and of course the quality of the video as well. Yeah? Uh, I think with Vimeo, it's also a commercial maker. So if you're putting on regular Vimeo, they have problems with commercial Thank you. Commercial videos. Yes, they do. So Vimeo Pro allows you to upload your technically commercial videos. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, Kaltura, I've not used this service. Anybody know how much it is? I tried to find out, and it says click here to, or Come and ask, ask us about our prices, which means if you have to ask, you can't afford it. <laughs> the big daddies in the world are Brightcove. This is what we use. Yeah. Yeah. For what you get. Yeah. I'm not sure I can actually tell you what we pay a month, but it's a heck of a lot more than $199 a year. Uh, but this is where there's a lot of hosts our videos. Once we went to Brightcove, most of our problems went away. But again, that's what we do for a living. We host, we, we give, provide video training. So if, again, as, as a developer, handing it over to a client, that's where I'm going every time. How long will this take? Depends on the product knowledge. Five minutes of shooting for one minute of footage. Editing, much longer. Depends on mistakes, graphics, transitions. Five minute video could take well over an hour. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, it's way longer than that for some of the stuff I've done. And I'm going to tell you right now, forget it. None of that applies to you. If all you're doing is training videos for your clients, 
you can cut most of that into just about nothing. If you, if you, once you practice this a little bit, of, uh, a few times, you'll get better and better and better. A bullet point, keep talking, use your mouse effectively, <coughs> zoom in, zoom out appropriately. Honestly, you can get it done in no time at all. Uh, when, when I did the WordPress videos for them this week, we shot, we shot them over the couple of hours. I had them done all five or six or whatever videos it was. I had them done in, in almost no time because I'm not editing them. She's talking in the background, so it, it all works, right? And, and I'm not going to worry about all the ums and ahs. I'm not adding graphics. It was strictly a training video. So it depends on the level of the tutorial that you're wanting to create. The better the tutorial, the more professional the tutorial, trust me, the time goes up exponentially. Uh, the longest I've ever spent on one two or three minute video, I think, was like 20 hours. But that was insane. That was a pretty specific video. Uh, how much is it going to cost? Well, we've kind of covered some of the costs already. From 150 bucks to 1500 it really depends on ambition and quality. Uh, OK, white screen. This is number eight. White screen, blue screen, and, and uh, green screen. Uh, you need a video camera, a tripod, and more. Um, basement or garage to make this work really well. Some kind of teleprompter. I use, uh, honestly, I use my MacBook Pro or my MacBook Air as a teleprompter. I just kind of shove it up under the camera. And there's free software for teleprompters. Uh, and unfortunately, actually now, they just came out with a new release. But until now, if you want to do white screen like the Mac commercials, you need Final Cut Pro or Final Cut X. Um, and then it's a massively long process, very quickly. And I'm, I'm going to probably skip part of this video, but we'll see. How do you take all of this and make it look like this? How do you take all of this and make it look like this? We're going to go beyond just ScreenFlow to explain how we create our online videos. You don't have to spend a fortune to do what we do. You probably have some of the things you'll need That's already. That's the hardware cost. I, $7.95 for a lamp set. And, uh, my main focus is on how to do what you're seeing right now. From the construct in the matrix to the I'm a Mac commercials. On my blog or uh, I'll post it in Twitter, uh, that video. But essentially, white screen is, is hard. And it's a lot of work. And it takes a lot of time to do. Both Camtasia and ScreenFlow now have blue screen and green screen alpha keying. And that's really easy. There's about a billion tutorials on how to do that online. So I'm not going to waste our time for that. But it's really easy. You just need a little bit of lighting and, uh, and, some, and a green screen or a blue screen. And then you can do overlays like we do all over the map. This is another really good tutorial. And it's in the PDF on white screen. And he does it for even less money than I spent. So uh, you can watch that YouTube video. So that's eight little thoughts on the hows. Let me talk about when. Uh, the time is now, not later. I'm going to encourage you to think documentation by video all the way through the development process. Do it all the time. Just make it a part of your everyday process when you come up with something that's going to need a tutorial. Don't wait till the site's ready to go live. Why? Because by then we're sick of it. <laughs> and we absolutely don't want to do it. All right? Integrate video documentation into your development cycle. And so as you're doing this kind of thing, Again, this is one of the videos I shot this week. Two is to go to sidebars and add a new sidebar. So you can hear the difference in the quality of this audio because I was just talking into the microphone on my laptop, right? Uh, again, normally I wouldn't do that, but the client was just happy enough to have the videos, and, uh, and that's what we made. So one last thought. Do the documentation that's unique or hard and let others handle the regular stuff. Um, there are dozens and dozens of tutorials out there for Joomla <laughs> basic stuff. Right? From OS training and OS toolbar to lynda.com to, uh, I, I, I mean, I could mention everybody. There's a lot of them out there. Don't do those. Why would you? Get, a, get your client a subscription to one of those services for 30 or 40 bucks for a couple of months. Give it to them. They'll think you're cool. And then just give them the documentation that they need for your particular <coughs> unique development of their website. OK? So, um, that's the OS tool. I had promised it wasn't going to be a commercial, so we're going to take that away. And uh, this is some more options that, uh, for uh, learning cam uh, ScreenFlow, similar kind of stuff for, to, uh, for Camtasia. So, so presentation, uh, not the videos, it's just the PDF of stuff. So uh, we've got 
about seven minutes for questions. So I kind of sped up there at the end, and I apologize I spoke so quickly, but hopefully the video will do it justice at some point. So, well, I'd rather, t I'd rather take questions. The other video is, again, there's a dozen tutorials out there on how to do white screen. So, yeah. Yes, yes, that's done in the editing process.